Hello and welcome. In this video, we will be discussing the Spectrasys System Architecture Tool in Genesis. We'll start with defining what is Spectrasys, how to access system level components, we'll set up a Spectrasys simulation, we'll evaluate the spectral products, we'll do some path measurements, and then finally discuss a Spectrasys example. So what is Spectrasys? It's a simulation engine that provides you tops-down system design and a troubleshooting tool. You can perform root cause analysis to pinpoint the origin of interfering signals and achieve high accuracy through co-simulation with uh, harmonic balance and also the use of X parameters. So how do we start using Spectrasys? Well, first we need to select some components to put in our system design. We can start from the part selector under the system category and select one of any of the system components. We can toggle that uh, part selector on and off from the toolbar. Also from the toolbar, we can launch the actual uh, Spectrasys components that you see here, this tray. And here are a list of all the various components, and each one of them usually has three or four subcomponents associated with it. So we have three or four mixers and amplifier types, uh, X parameters, as well as circuit link capability. And then here you see some of the filters, and uh, again, there are various configurations of filters available. So the next thing that we need to do is to start assembling some of these components. So we'll start our system design with some components. We're, we'll start with an amplifier here and drop that down on a schematic and we'll follow that with a uh, bandpass filter. In this case we're going to choose a Butterworth and we'll lay that next to it. Third element will be a mixer. We'll use a double balance mixer for this example and line that up and we'll follow that with an IF filter. Again a Butterworth and then we'll add an IF amplifier as you see here, we'll add that there. Now we need a source for down conversion. We'll select the oscillator symbol. and I'll use the F3 key to rotate it, that around to align it. And then we'll add a CW source to the input, you see here. So our next step will be to connect up our components. And we do that by just dragging from node to node with our mouse. And then add an output port. Okay, once we've assembled our amplifier, let me get rid of this toolbar. Let me walk you through some of the component settings because I've changed those. Our source is at 1 gigahertz uh, with uh, minus 30 dB power level. The RF amplifier, I gave it a 2 dB noise figure and a cutoff frequency at 2 gigahertz with a 20 dB gain. The uh, RF, amp uh, RF filter rather is centered at a gigahertz with 1 dB insertion loss. In our mixer, we've pretty much left to default values. You see there are a number of settings that we can use for our mixer, but in this case I just let it at the default values with a compression point and insertion loss or conversion loss, etc. And then the source we set for uh, 1070, which means we're going to have a high side mix. The LO is higher than the uh, RF. And we haven't uh, changed the phase noise characteristics. We're basically making this a pure source. The IF uh, filter is also a Butterworth. It's centered at 70 megahertz with a 1 dB insertion loss. And then finally, the IF amplifier, 30 dB gain uh, with a 250 megahertz cutoff. So we're next, ready for the next step. OK, we're now ready to launch a simulation. So we go up to the workspace tree, and we select Analysis, and then System Analysis, and here are the parameters dialog. Uh, from the Design to Simulate to the data set, as well as the frequency units. In this case, it's megahertz. Uh, we have choice of different values. Nominal impedance, 50 ohms, channel uh, width. Uh, that depends on your modulation. In this case, we got a CW source, so we'll leave it at, uh, at 1 megahertz. For the paths, if we want to um, evaluate the, the path losses or gains or so forth, we'll add a path. In this case, we're going from the CW source to port 3, which is our output. We can also uh, direct or change the output. We'll set a channel frequency since we're doing a, a down conversion to a, a gigahertz, which is what we're using as a source. And here you see it displayed. Next, we go to calculate. And this is how harmonics and intermods are calculated. Uh, we have a choice not to or to perform uh, multiple calculations. Here we can calculate noise. We need to instruct the t uh, simulator as to what temperature we're doing that at. 
If we have phase noise attached to our sources, we can add that there. Uh, this is how the spectrums are displayed, totals all together, uh, coherent signals added up together. Uh, we can also uh, enable what they call analyzer mode, which gives a, t a sort of a feel like a network analyzer because it has uh, filters uh, in Roloff assigned with that. Uh, level below uh, ignores signals that are below 200 dB in this case. We can select what frequencies below or above we want to ignore. Uh, the maximum spectrums affect uh, basically simulation time. In very large systems, you might want to limit the number of spectrums. And for output, these are the uh, various uh, data from different ports that are saved during a simulation. I'll press OK, and just that quickly, we've uh, completed the simulation. I'll right-click on the port, and you see there are a number of measurements we can display. I'm going to display just the spectrum at the port, and here we go. The horizontal green line you see is basically the noise floor, so I'm going to zoom on this window. What I'd like to show you now is something that's unique to Spectrasys. Here, when I hover a mouse over the signal, you see both the signal level and its frequency. And you also note the components of that signal, that is, what combination of LO and RF level and signal uh, uh, contributed to that spur. So that's very handy for finding rogue signals and where they originated from uh, if you have a problem. Now, I'll put a marker here on the uh, the down converted IF, and we notice that it is uh, uh, 10 dBm. So, is that a true signal? In other words, is that a true value? Is that what we should expect? Now, we can go through our receiver chain and you know do a manual calculation, or we can use one of the techniques such as channel power here. And uh, this is a contribution due to the path that we set up. Remember the path from the input to port three. And so here we can monitor power from input to output. What I'd like to do now is add another measurement to our graph. So I'll double click on the graph and then press the Add key. And you see a number of system path measurements on the right. But I'm going to select more measurements because they're somewhat cryptic. And we have over 111 different measurements. I'm going to select uh, Cascaded Noise Figure press OK. It warns us here that the, uh, the two level of the uh, graphs uh, are very far apart, so we're going to plot them on two different axes, another y-axis on the right. And press OK. And here we have both cascaded noise figure and channel power uh, as a function of stage. And if you look at the bottom of our graph, you can see how the uh, noise figure and channel power uh, change as it uh, marches through our system. What I'd like to show you here in closing is an example of a more sophisticated uh, system design which involves both a transmitter and a receiver and all the associated components that go into that. And here uh, on the end we see this uh, path loss model which gives us uh, gains for both receive and transmit antenna as well as path loss. And then of course the, the receiver uh, on this end uh, with the down conversion uh, amplification and so forth. In addition, in the examples, which you'll find in the Spectrasys examples directory, uh, here we see the spectrum of the input, uh, excuse me, the receiver input, the transmitter output, IF, as well as various um, path measurements for both uh, channel power and gain, as you see here. So while we've presented a large amount of information in this brief video, you will find that Spectrasys is an indispensable simulation tool for design, development, and optimizing your system designs. I thank you for watching.